Hello, everyone. Today we are talking with uh, Professor Peter Styring from the Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering at University of Sheffield and Director of the UK Centre for Carbon Dioxide uh, Utilisation. And we will talk about the world's first train to capture carbon from air while uh, it moves. Uh, hi, Peter. How are you? Hi. Good. Thank you. Good to talk to you. Thank you very much for that. Can you tell us uh, how this system works? Yeah, so th this is a sort of international project, a multi-investigative project. The idea is that when the train moves, and particularly when it breaks or comes to a stop, it loses a lot of energy. Uh, and the idea is that we use that energy in a regenerative mode, like you see on Formula One cars in the Kerr system or in uh, hybrid cars. We take that, the, the braking energy, convert it into electrical energy, and we use that to drive a carbon capture system. So we've not released the full details of the carbon capture system yet, the direct air capture system yet. Uh, that's coming up in the next couple of weeks because this, this is a new technology that has been developed over the last 10 years or so. But we, we want to get the system up and running in a, in a fully operational way before we go public with it. But it's a new way of carbon capture directly from air. It's, it's much more efficient. It uses a pressure swing technology rather than temperature swing. So we can drive it electrically, which is where the regenerative braking from the uh, rail system comes in. Obviously, it is rather uh, innovative uh, technology. Of course, uh, we have heard about uh, other, you know, more conventional direct air capture uh, system. Uh, which do you think is the main difference between these, all these conventional uh, traditional direct air capture systems and this one, this particular one? The, there are a lot of differences. The main one is that it's a purely pressure driven system. So you don't have to put any heat in there to do the, uh, the absorption of the CO2 once it's been captured, which means that you can do a very quick cycle time. So adsorption, desorption time of minutes, you know, a couple of minutes. It, it's also very small and compact which means in the case of the CO2 rail project, it's portable, which means we can put these onto rail cars with relative ease. The, the other thing is it's very simple. I mean, the, the, the key to good engineering is to make something as simple as possible so that it's easy to mass produce uh, and, and it reduces the expense. And because of the way we drive the technology, um, it, including energy recovering at many stages during the process, then we can, not only take down the uh, the capital expenditure, but we can take away take down the operational expenditure as well. So it becomes cheaper to capture the CO2. We don't want to put figures on that because obviously we're working in on, on a smaller scale at the moment. It's only once we get this out into the field and, and and working for real that we can give you an accurate cost prediction. The last thing I'd want to do is go away and give anyone false hopes that we could do this at a ridiculously low price. We've got to be realistic uh, and, and we're backing everything by the science and the engineering. The, the, we, we don't want to say it's the technology that will save the earth uh, because everyone says that. We want to be able to prove that. We want to prove that this technology will revolutionize carbon capture, not only in direct air capture, but also point sources. Do you believe that this technology uh, can be deployed in trains across the UK? At the moment, we're looking at the North American market because there is a very big difference between US trains and uh, UK trains. In, in the UK, we are going a long way to electrifying the lines. Now, that, that means you have a different type of train on the track. In North America, where you have you know these huge freight trains, which are in, you know in some cases five miles long, they tend to run still on diesel. And what we have to remember is, while we want to electrify things, this is going to take a long time because you have legacy equipment. You know, a train can last for many, many years, and it's not going to be a case that you, you suddenly make the diesel locomotive redundant. You're still going to have to power that for a while into the future. By putting a direct air capture system on there, you can, using different approaches, either ca capture the air from the train, uh, fr from the atmosphere as the train moves along, or you can capture the CO2 that's produced by the diesel engine by coupling the exhaust of the engine into the capture system. So this is 
almost, if you like, a transition. We're not saying that everything should uh, move to the CO2 rail car today. We're saying that this should be something that's rolled out uh, and it's part of a transition towards perhaps a fully electrified system. Is it something that uh, you have probably uh, estimated during this uh, research? Have you estimated how much carbon can probably be captured uh, during, let's say, a three-hour or a five-hour train journey? We have lots of different figures that will give you lots of different answers. It depends on the size of the system. Using the current system we have in the workshop, we can capture, uh, uh, on the current system, it is around 250 kilograms per day. If we go to the system which we're developing, which will be ready in a couple of months' time, that will be one ton of CO2 per day. But but that's a really small system. That that has a, a surface area of about two and a half square meters. Um, you, you can then put as many of these modules into the carriage uh, as you see fit, uh, and you, you can scale the capture accordingly. So it really depends what the requirements are, uh, what the capacity is, you know, how many carriages there are in a train. So it's a very open-ended question. When do you think, a rough, uh, just a rough estimate, when do you think that we could probably uh, see this technology in real life? So working with Eric Backman from uh, CO2 Rail, the CEO, uh, he, he's looking at the end of quarter one, 2023. So, you know, you, you're looking six months into the future. This is a technology that exists in the workshop. The system that we have at the University of Sheffield is now on a trailer, so we can hook it up behind a truck and we can move it to any location. In fact, we could even use it to do direct air capture uh, on a motorway or a road if we really wanted to. So it's just a case of getting the finance in place. The, the, the system to build is relatively low cost because we use well-established engineering techniques. So we, we could actually have the first prototype running within six months. And my final question for you, uh, Peter, is how important do you think that uh, these technologies are for transport decarbonization and especially for the UK? Yeah, that, that's a really interesting question. One, one thing is we're not talking about carb, uh, decarbonization anymore. That, that's something that's a little bit misleading. We're talking about defossilization. We still need carbon. Well, there is no getting away from it. We need carbon in society. What we don't need is the is fossil carbon, new fossil carbon entering the supply chain. So the importance of uh, this system is, if we take the UK perspective, for example, well, we, we could um, capture the CO2 as we go along. The ultimate aim is to take that CO2 and convert it into synthetic fuels as you're moving along uh, on the train, so it's a mobile system. We can do that within the next year or so. And that fuel that you produce, the synthetic fuel, can then go into other applications which would otherwise use fossil fuel. So what we're doing is creating a circular carbon economy. And, and you know, we're part of a big centre, at the which is headed by University of Loughborough, but involving uh, seven different universities, uh, called Circular Chem, which is looking at taking CO2 emissions among other things, and converting them into usable products. So in the UK, what you could do is you could produce products as the train is moving, which means that you don't have to extract more fossil oil to make those products in the first place. It's one of the, the basic concepts of the circular economy. The best way to avoid emissions is not to produce them in the first place. So you avoid emissions by capturing the CO2 as you go along.